Okay, and I think that we are live. If you are just started watching me, welcome. Um, I'm going to be doing a reaction to Hassan. If you don't know Hassan Habi, he... Hassan Piker, he streams on Twitch. And I just want to preface everything by saying I like him. I'm a big fan of his content. I love the H3 podcast. I watch Leftovers. I, I love all of his content, but you know, being a vegan, you probably realize that some of your favorite people, some of them, even if you think, no matter how intelligent these people are, when it comes to veganism, all of that just goes out the window. So I just want to preface that by saying I do like Hassan and yeah, I'm not a hater. I'm not hating on him. This is just purely on veganism because I am a vegan bodybuilder. I have been vegan for four years for ethical reasons so i just wanted to go through his content around veganism and yeah sort of react to it so over here i have this is eating animals wrong now i actually i haven't seen this before so we're going to be watching this for the first time let's go through it and where i'm coming from okay here 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 it's just Okay, I'm playing this just as a as a preemptive strike here, okay? It's Leo on the beat, yeah. Vegans, I don't hate you, okay? I hope. Oh my god, it vegans are awesome. Oh my god, it vegans are the best. Oh my god, it vegans are awesome. I've actually never heard that <laughs> that song's the music playing in the background, it's pretty... <laughs> oh my god, it vegans are the best! We will get to forage. I really do love we'll vegans. This episode. I love vegans. Oh my god, they're so perfect. I love vegans. I really do love those people. I love vegans. Oh my god, what they're so that? perfect. Okay, let's get started. Alright, let's do this. Just strap in, boys. It's gonna be a fucking journey. This is gonna be a journey. If we were all born, like, three centuries from now, the world has been globalized and like agriculture can reach every corner of the globe. How would that affect, if at all, your views or your choices? Am I going to be judged if I say not at all? I became vegan because I could no longer think about eating something that was once living and breathing. The primary thing that keeps me vegan is oh just God. always the animal liberation. The idea that we are trying to push our ideas onto others. On shows like this, I would love to see um, like a jacked vegan, because when you think of vegan, it people's assumption just goes to, you know, just someone who's not skinny, but like not big just a normal average person but if you got you know there's a lot of vegan bodybuilders out there got them on a show like this or just out you know wherever there's vegans being represented i'd love to see a conversation you know about protein coming from someone who's actually jacked as a vegan and big talking to someone who's not i'd love to see something like that like if, if you got someone like i can't think of anyone out of my top of my head um you know someone like brian turner um, that would be pretty interesting to see how how the show would sort of play out. That stereotype I've experienced the most. Hunting is a very hard concept for people to understand. I am in Texas, it's a lot more acceptable, even though being a woman who hunts, people still, you know, have a really hard time with that concept. I feel like a lot of people think vegans are more effeminate. People will question your sexuality oftentimes. <laughs> I grew up... <laughs> I've never heard that, to be honest. I've never heard that. I mean, it does make sense, the whole soy boy thing, the soy boy, less mas masculine, feminist trope. Um, but people questioning your sexuality just because you don't want to eat meat. I mean, <laughs> it seems pretty crazy. In a rural village, living off the land, the way we live is in total respect to the animals. And I think there's so much that people- Wait, is that not wrong? Wait, really? Do people say like, oh, you're vegan? I just assume if someone's a vegan that they're a liberal, like at the at the most. Yes, all the time. 
vegan female trait i'm vegan but i understand that hunting is a part of native tradition people do not know about indigenous culture we brought vegans and hunters to spark a dialogue wait only two hunters where's the third one unfortunately one cast member was unable to attend the day of filming but still but we still love the conversation we wanted to share with you damn the third hunter bailed dude he's too busy hunting that's what he was doing Sorry, I'm, I'm out hunting you uh, pussies. I'm queer, I'm vegan, and I'm multiracial. Hi, my name is Don Marvens. Uh, I've been a vegan for coming on six years now. I'm a freelance photographer, and I recently moved to the LA area. My name is Nina. I'm 24. I've been vegan for coming up on five years now, and I'm a professional astrologer. Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany. I'm Koya Condene from Alaska. I'm a first generation college graduate and I went to school in the and I have nothing against astrology but I feel like sometimes they get the weirdest people to represent veganism um like professional astrologer I, I didn't even know that was a thing what is a professional astrologer it just makes no sense California area and I'm currently on a road trip visiting Dude, it's great. Indigenous people auto auto like lock vegans into a, a into a shitty argument because like they could just immediately be like, "You're not respecting my traditions." And most vegan people are still like, they're super lib. A lot of them are rad lib, so they're just not going to be able to fucking counter that. Actually, I don't know. I I don't know because like we'll see. Anyway, I mean, just based on what he said. Um... It can be quite difficult to, you know, talk to someone who is Native American and hunting or eating meat is part of their culture. But just like any culture, no matter what culture you are, you know, just because something's cultural doesn't mean it's morally okay to do. And I get, you know, being someone who's Indigenous, it can be quite tricky telling them what to do when they've been told what to do, how to act for, you know, since they've been enslaved. Um... It's, it's sort of a tricky area to navigate through, which is why, you know, the, the most, when someone asks you, someone who's not indigenous asks you, or what are you going to say to someone who's Native American or someone who's indigenous? I'd say, yeah, okay, that's fine. But what about you? You know, you're not Native American, you're not indigenous. What is stopping you from, you know, making a change to a plant-based diet? That's, I'm curious to see what these guys' argument is against the indigenous people. Let's keep going. Friends to learn whose land I'm on. I am Carly. I'm from Texas. I'm a wife, a mom. I also do sales and marketing consulting. The first prompt is I care about animals' well being. Walk forward and do it. Is that surprising to y'all <laughs> that two hunters walked over? I'm, I would love to hear why. Yeah, I would love okay. to hear it. Hunters have the utmost. Bro, I, I feel like he's going to drop some fucking lines, I like dude. Okay. I, like I just, I feel like he's spicy. Okay. He already started out with like, I'm multiracial. I was like, oh God, here we go. I wonder what he's going to say. Respect for animals. He does I think like that's someone, a really hard. He does seem like someone who's going to drop a bomb and he looks like someone who knows his shit. So I can't wait to see what he's going to say. Thing for people to see is how can you love something um, and respect something that you kill? It's just a hard concept, right? Conservation is a big reason why I hunt. She's doing something called, she's being preemptive. She knows, you know, how, she's saying the argument against her before she even, you know, like whenever someone, whenever people do this, they say the argument that's gonna be put against them preemptively, and then they'll respond in a way that, you know, usually has nothing, they don't, they don't address the argument, but they just, you know, they say it before, they preempt, preempt, they're preemptive about it, just to sort of soften the blow of whatever um, the other person's going to say. It not only provides food for my family, but I can shoot a certain... It's like when people say, oh, I love animals. I want animals to live. I want them to breathe. I care about them. They're cute. But she, that's what she's doing. She's literally just... She's doing a but. That's what she's doing. A number of deer each year. And that will keep that population and that herd thriving. I guess I've never really came at this conversation from like a angle of vegans versus hunters. It's always vegans versus meat eater. Mm -hmm. So I understand in a sense the, uh, the respect you have 
to what you're doing. I just know that I could never do that. Yeah, and I think that for me is one of my maybe more bigger issues is not with vegans, but it's more people who eat meat but don't understand hunting. So you're gonna eat meat that was slaughtered at a factory, (laughs) but I can't just give a deer one swift, great bullet in the heart where it dies out where it's supposed to die. I was one of those people that said I could never even be vegetarian. Like I was probably like the people that you're describing, just, Mm -hmm. you know, not having a connection to what they're eating. I didn't think about it. And then... (laughs) Vegetarians are gonna get mad at me for saying this, but they're cowards, okay? Vegetarians are when you're like, I think like, uh, you know, eating the, the child of chickens is acceptable. Diet vegan Andes, dude. What's up? I sort of, I sort of agree with that. I don't, you know, vegetarians, if you're out there, if that's like a stepping stone for you to become a vegan, that's completely fine. I completely understand, you know, I, I was vegetarian. I mean, the only dairy that I was consuming at that point was whey protein. Um, and it was sort of a stepping stone because I knew that I eventually wanted to be vegan, but I know so many, so many vegetarians who have been born vegetarian, have been brought up vegetarian, who know about what happens to, you know, what happens in the dairy industry, but they don't make the jump. How, I feel like for a vegetarian, it's so easy to make that jump. If you've been vegetarian your entire life, to jump from being vegetarian to vegan, but I just see so many people just don't change at all they know what happens they just they are cowards i mean i agree with hassan um in regards to this people if you've been you know vegetarian your entire life it should be easy for you to just give up this one little thing but you won't they won't um and that's just a sad reality anecdotally this is from my own experience i don't know if this is every vegetarian out there but people who have been vegetarian their entire life this is what i've come across yeah, you're just like yeah um but in saying that most vegans that i know who are also you know something indian the same culture as me um are, are vegetarians who've been vegetarian their entire life so i get that as well you know um most vegans that i know they've been vegetarian their entire life they came across you know how meat is made and then they made the jump to veganism i respect that but then there's people who just don't make that jump who know everything that happens but they still don't make that jump I'm going to suckle on a cow titty. Fuck it. As streaming services go, I found a little documentary <laughs> through the suggestions. But it changed and, your life. And it changed my life. And like, I, I remember I went to brunch that morning and I had like sausage and egg and like fried cheese. And then that night I watched this documentary. And so that's why I'm vegan because I can't support like us as an industry and as a populace, like removing the choice from that large of a swath of animal populations just because they're animals. If there was a solution, like just a, the magic. The final solution. Magic happens, the skies part, and all the meat is like done in a way that is humane. Would that make you more inclined to eat meat? I think that you sort of get into the fundamentals of like, is it humane to kill something? I have to understand and respect and honor that like in indigenous cultures, you know, there's many reasons why people hunt. We would all be remiss if we didn't admit that, you know, at a time in human history, like we needed animal protein and animal meat to survive. But today it's not necessarily a necessity. I was being taught ethical hunting by an ethical hunter. And again, I think that's a hard, mm. harder concept here. Um, Cause trust me, like they're asshole hunters. Mm. But that's what I was, I saw conservation and I saw ethical hunting and I saw why we do it. And I saw the food, you know, I haven't bought beef. Mm. I mean, in six, seven years. Can I ask you a question that I'm kind of scared to ask? And um, we'll see. So you said that you're a mother and if you think of like Bambi, do you ever consider Uh-oh. the Small baby coming. animals. Dude, I'm excited. Come on. When are they going to hit the fucking name the trait, dude? I want them to fucking be as like bloodthirsty as they are in any given internet debate. Like I want, I love vegans when they're fucking rowdy as shit, dude. I want to, I want to hear the arguments. Like how can you justify murdering Bambi? Turns away from them. Okay. So Bambi doesn't exist. <laughs> That's a Disney movie. If a mom is there with her yearlings, Mm. you would never kill that mom, right? Mm. You wait until she kicks them out of the house. Mm. 
And that's part of like ethical hunting. That is like, yeah, no one really, like you wait until the babies are kicked out. I learned from my Clinket cousins, they're from the southeast in Alaska. They're the ones that invented the fish hook. It was so wide that only a full grown halibut could get caught. It's a generational thought. You're not just thinking about, oh, I need food tonight. You're like, how do I make sure I protect their natural processes. When fish hooks are made now, anything can cook out. So many of our pre-colonial traditions were staying in balance with animals. And we had so many practices that prevented overhunting. And the people who are living off the land, who are fighting for the land, are getting last priority. We're not allowed to fish if there's commercial fishing. So we're constantly being watched and fined. It's constantly having <laughs> land taken away. Um, if you look at any community, it's constantly happening to them where they're told. I can't. If a vegan was actually fucking spicy right now, they turn around and be like, oh, wow, your land is being taken away by massive uh, you know, massive uh, uh, companies. Well, uh, how about taking your life away because someone wants to eat your children? Like, come on, just say it, dude. I want to hear a vegan just go fucking buck wild like this. That's actually, so, that is a good argument. Like he's making an argument for them. It is almost like he has better arguments um, for veganism, which just makes, which is just, it's insane that he's not vegan already. But I love this. Vegans say shit like that to me all the time. Not, not really like hearing out whether or not there's like indigenous people in the audience or anything like that. Just con just considering what? Just curious. How do you morally justify eating meat? Delicious. Well, they're not allowed to do this or eat this. So there you go. Delicious. That's his um, main moral. That's how he morally justifies himself eating meat. Um, but let's see what he has to say. It's all connected. It's all a cycle. I'm loving how many vegans there are in the chat right now. Um, yeah, he's getting overpowered. If you have a choice of where you get to get your food and where it comes from, Dude, why did the and hunter even not knowing say yes about to that? it is a privilege to have the choice to be vegan that includes you know makeup and clothing and all of these things and you know sustainable clothing for example is a top dollar yeah. <laughs> um, if you're trying to buy it new and thrifting is great but some people don't even have access to that and so just i think that choice is a privilege and veganism is a choice i was born in haiti uh, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. And the fact that my parents were able to leave with me when I was just like one years old into the States, like really shaped how my life would go. The lifestyle that I'm living is such a stark contrast from the people down uh, in the Caribbean. I feel like I have to talk about how veganism, especially in the States and especially in like the global West, has been totally co-opted by like, I'm just gonna say it, by whiteness. Veganism shouldn't be a privilege in my opinion, but it is, like the world that we live in now, it is. They're hella reasonable. I don't know enough. <laughs> no shit they're reasonable. The whole argument is logical based and reasonable. Like, why can't you understand the arguments, Hassan? I don't know. About being a vegan, I think of it as like something that rich white people do, but I don't know. Mm. I, don't, I don't know any vegans. I don't know how much money it costs. Yeah, a lot of people- Yo, this mom is so Texas, it hurts, dude. She's like, I don't know any vegans, dude. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. In a way, being vegan is a privilege, but my mom was vegan in Mexico when she was young. Well, also um, from lower income backgrounds or areas, they also rely on fast food. Yeah. And that stuff is really cheap because as far as I understand, the government subsidizes meat and animal products mm -hmm. much more than it does vegetables. When we think about someone who has to work a low wage job to survive, you also have to think they're probably working more than one job possibly. Mm -hmm. You want the easiest meals. 
you want the highest calorie meals because you're working and you're burning so many calories. So when you're saying, why don't you eat more plant-based? You're asking them to change their shopping habits. You're asking them to spend more time. You're asking them to educate themselves. And when you are working that hard, you, you have to numb yourself. You are eating to survive. That is different than choosing what you're eating. Totally. And it's not fair to like, ask any of those people in survival. What the fuck is this, bro? This entire debate is just like vegans being reasonable and agreeing with the hunters. This is not how vegans are on the internet, okay? Yeah, this goes to people you, like, your chat, the vegans or vegans in your chat aren't vegans that you meet, you know, out in real life. These, these are reasonable arguments. These are logical, well-based arguments. Like, these people know what they're talking about. Vegans aren't just argument, argument, argument. They just don't. It's, it's reasonable. That's why I became a vegan because of how reasonable it is. Like, people are like, yeah, this is how vegans are. They're super reasonable. Except like whenever the conversation starts, maybe it's because I nuked Discord recently. So like not a lot of them are chiming in right now in the chat. But like, like I don't know where Bao Bao is when you need him, but like, you know. I'm not hearing any of the usual vegan takes. Travel mode to completely like shift their way of life and, mm -hmm. and learn a whole new lifestyle. And I definitely agree with that. I'm just curious, like if we were all born like three centuries from now, the world has been globalized and like agriculture can reach every corner of the globe. How would that affect, if at all, your views or your choices? Am I gonna be just- I don't want vegetables! <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like I'm gonna eat meat. I don't wanna say there's no reason to not eat meat, but there's maybe no reason for me not to eat meat. I get, I get it, I get it. I'm feeling judged. <laughs> I'm they haven't called them Nazis yet, like, it's kind of weird. Like, that's what I'm used to. I'm not judging, you know, but, I, but I don't understand. That's exactly the point. Just because, you know, the people he argues with or the people he's spoken to who are vegan, you know, use terms like Nazi or, you know, just stupid arguments in my opinion. You're not gonna change anyone by calling them a Nazi. They're not a they're not a fucking Nazi. You're not gonna change anyone. Um and apparently that's all the people that's the vegans that he comes across on his streams, but these this is veganism. I mean this People know what they're talking about. They're not, you know, just using some dumbass arguments. They're using reasonable, logical arguments. And everything they're saying, I'm agreeing with, of course. Like, it makes sense. Anyone would agree with. And I'll be honest, I yeah. don't understand. I mean, like, I still cry when I kill something. I mean, mm. I love the animals, but they're still just animals. Like, it's okay to eat one. Everyone's been eating like these forever. That's true. You know, and it's been there's never been practice. a culture ever that was 100% vegan. You know, they have shifted. They're plant-based mm. and Mediterranean and Buddhist, and they have moved towards a culture who was 100% vegan, I don't think has ever existed. It sounds like it's a natural order kind of thing. Yeah. That's interesting. I think this would have been better if they didn't have hunters on, especially if they didn't have the indigenous lady on too. Because then you could have seen vegans like go buck wild. You know what I mean? Cause like the hunters are already like, these are hunters that care about conservation. They should have just had like vegans versus like factory, uh, you know, factory farm eaters. Like that would have been like a significantly better, uh, content focused. I agree. That would have been a much better conversation. Um, yeah. Approach. You know what I mean? Even someone like myself, who's like a fucking idiot. Even though I do recognize that, like, uh, you know, vegans are morally superior. And I'm just too weak to uh, not eat meat because it's delicious. My entire extended family is vegan and I'm shamed for it constantly. The argument is people who aren't vegan are because of a lack of effort, which is infuriating. I mean, it's true. It is true. It's interesting to hear because I if you're not vegan, it's... I mean, if you're living in a global west, you have, you know, a house over your head. Um, you live in a house... You can, you know, afford um, to do things, to buy things. If you're living in a global West and you can live a comfortable life, you can go vegan. It's not that hard. It's not that expensive. It's just a lack of effort. Honestly, I've made so many videos about this. It's cheaper 
it, and it, it is cheaper for me to go plant-based than it is for me to eat meat every single day just because of how cheap plant-based foods are right now if you don't account for foods like you know, vegan cheese vegan meats which are you know it's hit or miss and they're usually more expensive because government subsidies just like this person pointed out meat products animal dairy products are heavily subsidized by the government because they're not as profitable um and yeah that's why they're so cheap in grocery stores in fast food like a two dollar hamburger would actually cost you like twelve dollars without the government subsidies so there's an insane amount of government subsidies put on animal and dairy products which is why they are so cheap compared to vegan products but the more people that do go vegan the cheaper these products will come down but for now your basics like your whole food um, plant-based items so cheap lentils legumes chickpeas you no know, rice pasta all of these things are so freaking cheap right now the cheapest protein that i can think of off the top of my head is probably has to be soy um yeah soya chunks soya mints or called tvp textured vegetable protein insanely cheap where i live it's like two dollars um and in one little two dollar packet has 100 grams of protein so there's a, a lot of cheap protein vegan protein out there there's lots of them it's just a lack of effort i'm firmly of the belief that like we are animals mm -hmm. so for me the natural order perspective doesn't hold a lot of water do you guys have pets like a duck and in other parts of the world, okay, come on. What you would consider your come pet, on. some people would eat. But that's like, there. Like I mean, Hassan knows his like arguments, but I want to hear what my dog. How, <laughs> he, how, how he justifies his arguments. You know, like he knows the vegan arguments, but what does he have to say against them? That's what I want to know. That's the content that I want. You know, I mean, yeah, I can't yeah. worry about mm -hmm. someone in China eating dogs. Like yeah. I, you know, we can all try to make the world a better place. And it's interesting though, because it does kind of challenge the natural like, order perspective. Yeah. Like, like where if, do you draw the line? Right. Something to think about in this conversation too is they're just animals. You know, how about we cook your dog just an animal? Yeah, no, like I, I, I see that argument, but it's like, I think, I think most people fail to recognize that like. One, we certainly uh, associate like a higher value on, on, you know, like most humans are species. Vegans are species too. Say it. He's going to say it a plant-based argument. I swear to God, if he says plants have feelings, plants feel pain. Like ultimately, if you ask vegans, like, would you rather eat a human uh, on a fucking plane crash in the aftermath of a plane crash and it's the only way you can survive or... Your dog, most people will say their dog, right? So ultimately at a certain point, everyone's a species. That that argument makes no sense. I mean, sure, if you're if there's been a plane crash and you have to eat something, obviously I would eat a dog before I eat a human. But that's survival situation. Anyone if someone says they'd eat a human before a dog, that's that's weird that's fucking weird so to put that hypothetical you know thought experiment on someone and then you know it's either this or that what are you gonna do like no shit people are gonna eat a dog like if you ask any vegan if you're on a stranded island and he had to eat a, like he had to eat an animal to survive of course like if you ask me of course i would that's a survival situa situation so this argument like any argument based on survival situations you can't just they're stupid i mean they are stupid i get asked that so many times oh if you're on a stranded island are you gonna eat an animal fuck yeah i am if i need to survive i'm gonna do whatever it, it takes to survive but i don't have to make that choice every day i don't have to survive every single day i can choose what foods i want to consume That shouldn't change someone that extreme example should not change someone from you know preventing further harm happening to animals so i do see the vegan argument so we're supposed to just ignore the unpaid labor of hispanic and latino farm workers or is this chat full of fucking morons including us on wait what dude what kind of fucking take is that like i literally argue i advocate to to turn uh those uh unpaid or 
those uh, migrant workers into fully like fully naturalized US citizens that have every right to advocate for their best interests and unionize and shit like what the fuck also are you stupid you think vegetable you think agriculture production revolving around vegetables don't have that exact same kind of exploitation like literally the exact same kind of exploitation are you fucking stupid why did you just make a why did you just make up an argument in your head without even fully thinking about where my uh, uh pov is on this matter i'm glad you love the meat industry and all of its practices this is totally a thing you said yeah literally me i love big corporations only when they're murdering animals rapidly <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm critical of of uh you know factory I'm not critical of factory factory farming sorry I'm critical of giant corporations except for factory farming which I think is ethical sustainable and great I famously say that all the time I'm surprised that not a single person has done name the trait though they're being cowards do it is knowing that uh, even when we eat plants there's so many people that we're exploiting yes the core of this I think is just having that respect for your food. I fully agree with that. I think it's such a falsehood when vegans say cruelty free. Mm -hmm. The avocados that I eat, you know, were harvested by people that are being exploited, so. Do you guys consider hunting a privilege? Is it everything a privilege? To a, a point, right? Yeah. A lot of people are going literally in their backyard, shooting something, processing it in their house, and putting it right on the table for their family. Like, mm -hmm. that to me is beautiful. Hunting can be really expensive. You basically have to have a huge ranch or you have to spend a ton, a ton of money to hunt on someone else's ranch. And then I think what a lot of people see are, right, the trophy hunters and the going over to Africa and hunting. I have not done that yet. That does not mean that I am not for it or against it. I do know that tourism in Africa is a huge moneymaker for mm -hmm. them. I mean, those villages are really poor and having an entire animal and multiple animals that hunters give them is a, it's big for them. My question with that would just be, why would it have to be? You guys are throwing up question marks, but like animal conservation that revolves around hunting like an older fucking rhino that is significantly damaging to the existing rhino population. And this is a very common argument from hunters but uh is is actually good to just like sell off the fucking uh some rich white person overseas so that uh, the rest of those finances the rest of those profits can go back to like literally uh conservation efforts and also stimulate the local economy that's what she's talking about i love hunting extinct white rhinos no don't don't no there's obviously an other side of that to, uh, as well it's a real argument though it is a real argument from what i understand that's 100 percent not fucking true the uh, other side of that of course is that still like um most of the time it's not the uh most of the time it's not like a fucking animal that is uh damaging to the rest of the pack but why was it bad that the twitter lady put her dog down because she didn't want to take care of it says bow bow i was waiting for a bow bow take dude thank you hit me with that spice Hit me with that fucking spice, baby. Because I'm a species. And I think that uh, we've already domesticated dogs to a level that they literally cannot survive without us. So now that we fucked up, we got to take care of them. Um, okay, so that's probably like the first time that I've heard him respond to an argument about you know dogs, why he wouldn't eat his dogs. And he brings up that they have been domesticated for a long time, that they can't survive on their own. That argument applies to, you know, most animals in the factory farm industry. Like most of these chickens, most of these, you know, these animals have been so genetically modified to, you know, either make them lay more eggs, to make them bigger as soon as they're born, to, you know, pump them up with steroids. These animals aren't going to survive out in the wild. Like if we shut down factory farming tomorrow, these animals will not, you can't just let these animals off into the wild. They will not survive. They will you know, fuck up the entire ecosystem because we've been genetically modifying them for so long. Like eggs, like a wild, like a chicken, like a hen doesn't lay that many eggs. Um, but we've been genetically modifying them to lay multiple eggs, you know, a day, a week. They're not like this. There's nothing natural about the factory farming industry. And to make that argument, 
about dogs that we've been, you know, modifying them, um, domesticating them for a long time. It's, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's sort of double, you're setting a double standard for yourself. You're being hypocritical because, yeah, dogs have been domesticated for a long time, but these animals have also been, you know, modified genetically for a long time. None of these animals will survive out in the wild. And I don't want them to. I don't want, you know, animals to go out and have to survive out on their own. I don't, I think these animals should not exist at all. I don't think that's a big, you know, I don't think that's a um, controversial take. I think like a lot of vegans would agree, like if not most vegans would agree with me. And I think that I heard Erdling Ed talk about this. We don't want these factory farm animals to exist at all. The only reason we're reproducing them at such an insane rate is to kill them. And we, all we want is to stop reproducing these animals. We, we don't want these animals to be born. We don't want them to die. We want the whole process to stop. The entire factory farm industry should stop. We should take care of the animals that exist already. But, you know, I don't want these animals to keep reproducing. I don't want them to keep, you know, being born with all these defects. But, yeah, I don't think that's a controversial take at all. And they're chill. Dogs are fucking chill, dude. They're like literally bred specifically for humans to to cuddle with and, and take on walks and, you know, clean up the poop behind. Neither are cows or chickens. I think if more people had chickens as pets, more people had cows as pets, they probably would feel, they would probably start feeling the same exact way that they do about animals too. You like cats? No. Vegans and I agree on the cat take that they're devastating to the wildlife population or they're devastating to the to the ecosystems which they exist in they're fucking horrible yeah they will fuck up every bird dude they are mass murderers they're genocidal freaks be a tourist it kind of just sounds like the white savior complex narrative because we are willing to pay a shitload of money. <laughs> I remember reading a statistic about like a single elephant in its lifetime can garner over a million dollars just from photographic tourism. One single elephant's ivory is about $21,000. So just that in itself. See, she's talking about hunting for conservation. He's talking about something that is like super duper fucking illegal. Like, so they're on either they're on like the extreme side of either argument where like hunting for conservation oftentimes isn't like the common thing that happens, but it could be a good thing. He's talking about fucking poaching. Like that's, that is like incredibly illegal because of uh, how much people poach and, and yeah, like no shit. It's legal, but people still do it. Like it's so many people poach, like it's, uh, fu it's fucked up, but uh, because of uh, how devastating it is like to me is evidence that like non-violent tourism like she said trophy hunting yes trophy hunting for conservation is the real thing white people are willing to pay like an insane amount of fucking money to go out and be able to like hunt like a fucking uh a white rhino uh you know older uh a dying fucking animal that is like threatening the rest of the pack with aggressive behavior I'm giving you like a, like an edge case. I'm certainly offering you like one potentially ethical, uh, uh, form of, of hunting that like would be killed regardless for the sake of, for the sake of making sure that the rest of the, uh, the rest of the group is, is still safe. But, but uh, I, by I honestly don't understand what he's trying to say that it's, I, I don't like that. Just, it just makes no sense I enlarge like the shit that you do see about trophy hunting is that they're fucking awful humans that go and and like they don't go and hunt like a you know an older aggressive elephant or some shit that's like trying to murder young ones whereas they go out and you know they hunt whatever they do like trophy hunting former wildlife biologist here is a real thing but the with the need for poached materials on the market and exploitation over the poor to poach these materials is a real problem and trophy hunting contributes this.
need for poached materials on the market and exploitation of the poor to poach these materials is the real problem and trophy hunting contributes to this. Yeah, I mean, a, a form of that kind of conservation, well, it's not for fucking conservation, but like deer and invasive species are routinely fucking murdered on ma on mass in a lot of places in America to preserve the ecosystem. You have to fucking kill you have to kill some invasive species, otherwise they overpopulate. And then they murder all the other, um, all the other animals. Like pig hunting in Texas with Ted Nugent. You need to get a god dying, you need to get a god dying motherfucking. You need a, you need a fully automatic M64 brother that you fucking strap onto the side of your goddamn chinook. So you can start ripping these fucking hogs 50 at a time, brother. How else are you going to take them god dang down? You need to be hog hunting, brother. Hey, yeet, yeet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. God dang bazooka. Bro. Fortunate. You need to be hog hunting. Bro. Sorry. Hunting is only acceptable if it's food. So I'm in M60 with fucking fortunate son playing in the background as I fucking fly in. Your life is more important than that other animal's life. And that is more reasonable to me than saying that your pleasure or your trophy or whatever is more important than an animal's life. There's also safety, which I now realize. Mm -hmm. And it's like almost two hours if you needed a medical emergency evacuation. So yeah, I don't know any killing besides safety and like food. And then we still try to make the most out of the body and the fur and we'll try to like feed it to the dog team. So. There is just the biology of land and there is biology of carrying capacity and there is biology of how these animals have to be, you know, taken care of. I know that if people are not hunting, those deer are going to starve. There's not enough food, mm. there's not enough water, there's not enough shelter. So to me, mm. I will take one for the team and I will shoot a few <laughs> deer this year to keep the land in check and the ecosystem in check. I don't disagree that um, maintaining equilibrium of an ecosystem is important. My question to that would be like, what's actually sitting at the root cause of the deer overpopulation? Is the root cause that people aren't hunting enough? Carrying capacity when humans take up 90% of land biomass? Or is the root cause that their, you know, their land is being taken away? But me making assumptions, hunting is a band-aid solution. Like, I wish I could answer a very smart... Why is it human's decisions to kill overpopulated animals? just wondering i mean just wonder a little bit further and i think you'll arrive at the conclusion that like you know they want to keep the delicate ecosystem uh, which whose balance has been disrupted by humans existing regardless and whose you know whose land is also taken over by humans constantly to create you know, they need more land. If you want to create meat, if you want to create dairy, you need to create, you need more land. You need to destroy habitat. You need to create more soy crops. You need to, the whole process of meat and dairy is a destructive one because of how much land is actually needed to produce this. Um, yeah. You don't need to control the population if you give back the natural space to animals? Okay, but that's a fucking idiotic take. Like, what, what are you, you're saying that in Twitch chat, dude. Like, which means that you take advantage of technology. Technology that, like, literally relies on infrastructure. Infrastructure, which literally means that, like, you've destroyed natural land that animals used to live on. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Hassan doesn't know how much land is actually used for infrastructure versus how, how much land is actually used for creating meat and dairy, for creating, you know, foods that we consume. Because think about it, animals that we eat need food um, and way more food than we ever need. And I think it's around 70 to 80 percent of all agricultural land on this planet is used by us to grow food for animals, not to grow food for us, to grow food for the animals that we are eventually going to kill 
and that number just keeps expanding and yeah like that's such a are you gonna go live in a fucking cave like i don't understand you, that argument that he's using you can use that against everything you know or climate change we're destroying habitat technology i mean how else are we going to use technology technology uses land technology uses you know um infrastructure if you don't want technology go live in a cave climate change we, there's nothing we can do about climate change Dan. He's right. Killing off apex predators like wolves that keep deer in check is it causing a major problem. Should operate on the virtue that we're very healthy. Tablespoons of nut butter in one fucking meal, dog. What are you talking about? That's the whole point. That's actually my point is that like there are incredibly delicious substitutes in uh vegan alternatives it's just that they're delicious for a reason because they're not very healthy you know, you know what i mean yeah sure um but there's been studies and research to back that plant-based meats meat meat made from plant-based sources is actually healthier than meat itself like that's just that's just what it is i know a lot of people like hassan they say oh you're gonna eat processed you're gonna eat you know processed meat that's not natural that's made from this blah 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 but the fact of reality is that the meat plant-based foods meat is more healthy for you than you know getting the same sort of meat from actual meat sources in terms of overall health um yeah it's so dumb like Obviously, I don't mean like eating appropriately as a vegan is unhealthy. That's so stupid. I would never make that argument. Yeah, of course you wouldn't because it's fucking dumb. I think most vegans understood exactly what I'm talking about. And now non-vegans are the ones who are arguing against this take. Why did I do that? Just like, wait until you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 24. So I feel mm -hmm. like God. I'll just keep on kicking. I don't know. Coming here, I want to be very careful in extremes. Like my meat is, you know, my diet is healthier. I don't All right. So let's check this other one out. This is a more recent one that I saw him um, sort of talk in. And I think this is an interesting one. He's reacting to how caviar is made. Sturgeon species or import their eggs. On the other hand, the more rare caviar becomes, the more we can't get enough of it. There's actually an economic idea that explains this. It's called the rarity value thesis, and it describes how rarity increases the value of the item, even though the item itself has never changed. Sturgeon can weigh up to several thousand pounds and produce hundreds- Am I the only one, like even when I was eating meat? Caviar is fucking disgusting. Just the way it's made, like, see, it's disgusting. Hundreds of pounds of roe at a time. The world record belongs to a- It just makes me feel weird. Like, why is it such a delicacy? I don't understand. I will never understand. A beluga sturgeon that weighed 2,500 for a female oh, population- They're aborting sturgeons! 11, all wild caviar would become illegal. <coughs> oh! We're exploring a different technique which doesn't involve killing the fish. It's called stripping. The fish are injected with a hormone that oh, triggers ah, their urge to release it. That's fucking hey. ah, Y'all be, I just ate that last night, bro. Yo. Hey, yo, that's nasty as fuck, bro. Oh. Oh. Oh, Lord, she gushing. <laughs> Oh, brother. Yo, what is? Stop showing me that. No. Oh, no, dude. What the frick? Oh, no. Oh, Lord, she coming. Yo, we got to run that back. We got to run that back. The fish are injected with a hormone oh. that triggers their urge to oh. release eggs. Farmers have been doing this for many years, but not to get caviar just to produce more fish. It wasn't until recently They're that people started canning this stuff. Eggs. That's disgusting. And selling it as caviar. The biggest thing for, uh, is that, yes, 
So now Gordo. Bro, this guy if, straight up looks like you a super nut villain. on a fucking on a napkin, okay, or on a on a fucking paper towel, and that's zero dollars. She's nutting. The idea behind He's already uh, stays alive. This guy looks like a super, like a super villain. Dimitris Trakos. He. He looks like someone who owns a caviar farm. You have really small impacts on the fish because you do it really, really fast. You take the fish off the water, from out of the water. You put it on a special uh, holding facility. The fish is already uh, started to spawn, and then all it uh, all it requires, basically, for you to mm, press on the belly, massage the belly, and the caviar will just flow out of the fish. The idea behind no kill caviar is a commendable one, but it has yet to really catch on. Either way, with caviar farms in place, this gives the wild sturgeon population a chance to recover. She gushing on my sturgeon to like caviar? <laughs> Nutty, bro, because it's nut. <laughs> and texture. I'm not going to find it in fucking nice, bro. The, the wild... How do y'all think we get milk? You know what I mean? Like, okay, this is a part that I want to version react to. of extraction. Like, he almost reaches the point he almost touches on the point but which by the way i mean all matter of food is is uh it produced in really really awful manners don't misunderstand me but i am a species so Bridge. i've come to andalusia in southern spain which for the yeah, how do y'all think we get milk you know what i mean like you think the cows just have like cow sex I love this. I love this. I need to put this on up. How do we get milk? And I think this is one of those rare times that Hassan understands how fucked it is um, to eat, go vegan. One of his chatters says it. Go vegan. Not just one. It's amazing how many vegans there are in his chat. Um, but yeah, I love that You know, he brings up the topic of cows and dairy farming. Let's see what he has to say. The cows are just like living together comfortably, happy, and then just happen to have cow sex. And then they're like, oh, I'm pregnant. Look at all the milk I have. Like, that's not how that works. You know what I mean? And then you go up to the cow and you're like, well, I guess I might as well milk you because your, your titties have grown. Your udders are bursting. You know, let's milk you. That's ethical. Like, no, that's it's cow rape. That's how you do it. He literally makes the argument for veganism and vegans. And it's just like, bro, why didn't you see it? Hassan, I love you. But like, you're an idiot when it comes to veganism. Like, you make, you've made the arguments. You've literally, like, numerous times throughout this stream, you've made the arguments for veganism. But why does, why did a dot not click in your head? And it's not just, you know, talking about it. Your actions and what you buy has a big impact on veganism and on this like for the meat and dairy industry like it is cow rape what you said is correct you've probably seen the videos of these dairy farms i've seen it it's traumatized me and if you know how you know special cows are as an animal and i mean all animals are special but cows can sense emotion they can uh, much deeper than many other animals and a lot of humans have a deep connection with cows um even knowing that and when you realize how you know dairy farms um actually exploit the cows and honestly i think that dairy is worse the dairy industry is much worse than the meat industry because in the meat industry yeah you are killing animals but in the dairy industry you're not just killing them you are raping them um you are killing any male calf that is born and you're giving the cows a a life full of torture the way that they're treated it's not just that it's torture until you die it's rape until you die it's rape until you can't produce milk anymore and as soon as you know a calf is born it's taken away from you and as a mother you have to see that happen in front of you and it just makes me so upset and when you when you think about cheese as well cheese is made from milk and i learned this um not too long ago, I think it was last year, that the reason why cheese is so addictive for a lot of people, it's not because of the way it tastes, it's not to do with anything, but there's an actually a chemical 
um, that's linked to the casein in the milk in the cheese itself that when calves are drinking from their mother it makes them want to go back to the mother to drink more milk so that addictiveness is built in 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 the cow in the milk that it gives its babies because it's made for the babies not for us that's why cheese is so addictive that's why like you know when people start eating cheese they just want to keep eating cheese and i get why it's so addictive but it's pretty fucked the reason why it's so addictive is because you know it's for the baby calves not for us so yeah like he completely understands that milk is rape milk is murder and he still doesn't it, it doesn't seem to connect in his head uh, anyway 25 years has hidden one of the mediterranean's best kept secrets if this caviar is as good as the real mccoy the proper beluga then this could be a fucking amazing find get on beat all right the rest of this is i just wanted to react to that part when you talk about cows but hasan Azanu. Hassan reacts to Azanu. Speak though. Like I, I get that. I eat it every day. Are you vegan? Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure this will be this will be really good if if uh, Twitch decides that that's a, a terms of service uh, violation. Uh, and and uh, bans me. I'm sure that that'll really that'll really show that'll really show everybody, you know, uh, the the problems with meat eating. I know, I get it. Like the point that you're trying to make is that if you show animal abuse, like like you might actually get banned as a as a violation of the terms of service, kind of like uh, you eating chicken, because that's an inconsistency. Uh, and um, you know, good job. Thank you. I'm sure it's still fine, but shut the fuck up, vegan. <sighs> Do that. Vegans don't have pets. Vegans are petless. Many vegans keep millions. Am I for factory farming? Now I am. I love factory farming. Pets and small feed Is it like you never? It's so hard to find a serious argument um against veganism so far all i've seen is arguments for veganism but arguments against veganism maybe let's see if we can find something oh he actually posted on instagram Okay, so a lot of people are mad at me for eating meat. I understand meat production contributes significantly to climate change, especially in America. Cer certain facilities are less than ethical in the animal rearing procedures overall. I absolutely, I also absolutely believe the regressive legislation passed that halts progress from happening on either of those fronts is messed up. Having said all that, I appreciate and support all vegans and vegetarians, but we'll keep consuming meat responsibly. That's just it's not possible bro it's just not possible you can't consume meat responsibly that just makes no sense that's ugh, i don't even know like he, he did the same thing he brings up all the arguments against veganism and then just says oh i'll keep consuming meat responsibly like so far this entire stream this guy's made arguments for veganism um even the stuff that i wanted to say but he never responds to it. Let's have a look at the comments. Yeah, there is no such thing as eating meat responsibly. That's an oxymoron. No fucking shit. So despite it being environmentally horrible and admittedly unethical, you will just keep doing it. Okay, I love this. 
Wait, you're in Israel and complain about animal rights instead of Palestinian genocide? Lol. Checkmate. And I love her. Char Charles Jr. The cool thing about being human is that you can literally care about more than one thing at a time. Beautiful. That is a perfect response to that. It is, it is a perfect response. Like a, a lot of people, when you talk about veganism, they're like, oh, but what about human rights? Oh, but what about this? But what about that? But you can care about more than one thing at a time. Like literally, it's not like you can pick one thing and you have to focus on that for the rest of your life. No, you can you know, choose to care about more things than one as a human. I love the comments, honestly. Yeah, animal agriculture is the number one cause of global warming, deforestation, ocean dead zones, water depletion, and the world's largest species extinction. Kind of a big deal. No shit. But yeah, that's the first thing that came up. Let's see if he's said anything else um, on... Thoughts on non-vegan leftists. I like his politics and agree with him on almost everything except for his lame excuse for not being vegan. I'd honestly love to see him debate with Erling Ed or some other vegan in a longer format than this video. What video? Have I seen this? Hey Hassan, how's it going? Cool. Pretty good, man. Pretty good so far. I, I'm I'm actually shocked that. This well, I'll make I'll make a little comment or two, then return to name the traits. So first of all, I'd acknowledge it's definitely good of you to be willing to concede that on some level there's something you're doing here that you're not comfortable with or that you think is wrong. Um, there's something slightly weird about saying that the way you're acting is consistent with your philosophy and immoral, because that would imply that your philosophy is immoral. And then just with the actual. Okay. Yo, vegans, are you fucking new here? Or are you stupid? I literally eat two pounds of chicken every day. Like, wh what are you? This is the one time where I'm having like tendies that I didn't make myself. Some of these motherfuckers are like, oh, imagine being so invalid, invalid. I think that's ableist, by the way, I assume, but in like British terms that you would uh, eat a dead corpse in a carcass. Yeah, I do. I am eating a corpse. Yo, this comment is fucking perfect. Oh my God. I, there's no better way that I could have put this myself. The way you talk about veganism actually allows me to imagine how Republicans and conservatives view you. When he talks about veganism, it's literally like how, you know, conservatives talk about socialism or someone like Ben Shapiro talks about socialism. They don't know jack shit about it, but they still talk about it. Yeah. I love that comment. Like, he knows that it's bad and is a bad person for doing it. It's kind of annoying how much of a cop-out this is. It is a cop-out. Um, it's like excusing your shitty behavior by saying, yeah, I know I'm fucked up, oops, and then being okay with that. Like, that, yeah, it's like being against universal health care, understanding, you know, all the points for it, understanding why it's so, it may, it'll make such a big difference, but then being like, yeah, I'm against it. Like, I, I'm fucked up. But yeah, I, you know how stupid that sounds? Being like, yeah, I think every human should have universal you know, health care. I think, you know, this is a good thing. People should have access to health care. But I'm against all types of health care. I'm sorry. That's, it's fucked up. I know. Oops. Let's move on. Like, it's just so stupid. Yep. 
In reality, non-vegan leftists just like eating meat and cheese, just like Omni Omnis. They're just better at dodging their way out of it. Also, fuck the leftists who say that advocating for veganism is classist or racist because indigenous people hunt um, for food. Yeah, that's literally what Hassan... I mean, I, I did speak about it at the start of the stream. Next baiting leftists... Yeah, I think this reminds me of, of a point that someone made where when you talk about politics, you can have strong political opinions um, and you can debate them all you want. But when it comes to veganism, which actually forces you, it doesn't force you, but it requires you to make, um, make a stand against something, which requires you to change your lifestyle in accordance to your morals it that changes people people can talk about anything people can talk about leftist things people can, people can talk about socialism pe people can talk about anything but when you ask them of something to give up something that they've been doing for their entire life that that sort of makes people think and i think veganism really requires you to think about that and you know, it's one of those things that actually makes like you have to change you have to change your lifestyle you have to give up something there is a sacrifice there's an element of sacrifice required when you become vegan which you know there's no element of sacrifice going from conservative to leftist um it's just your opinions that change on things you're not actually changing anything about your life um and i don't think you have to you know like apart from who you vote for you know, just because you are on the left, you know, it doesn't mean you should, you know, live a life of in a cave or something away from everything. Uh, you should make no money. I don't agree with that. You can make as much money as you want, whether you're a leftist or conserv conservative, you know, depending on how you make it. But being vegan, it forces you to make a change. And I think that's what stumps a lot of people, a lot of smart people. But yeah, Hassan Piker making zero sense on veganism. Vegan. There is no such thing as a non-vegan animal rights activist. 100%. They don't, there's no such thing. I mean, you can't be an animal rights activist and not be vegan. You know, that's it's the bare minimum you can do. Like, you don't even have to love animals to be a vegan. I'm just saying that you don't have to love animals. The only thing you should agree with is that um, the life of another living creature is worth more than a few seconds of taste bud pleasure that you receive by eating that animal. You're not making an argument that an animal's life is greater than your life or the animal's life is the same as your life. No, you can still view animals as lesser than you, but is their life worth more than not you, but more than your taste buds? The few seconds of pleasure that you get from eating meat, that's a comparison you have to make. Let's see this. Huge meat eater, an animal rights activist in a way. An animal rights activist in a way. Hello, everyone. My name is Hassan Piker, and I am a huge. Meat I love eater. lifting vegan. In other logic. words, really, like I love his videos. His sarcastic take on things. I love. You know, I literally pay for animals to be stripped of. You. Let me just throw you. As you can see, I have zero tolerance for oppression. Have a look at this thread. Austin Ox.
it isn't on one person to change the issue of meat production and its role in climate change then whose responsibility is it you know um like it it's not one person's responsibility and i completely get when people say you know 70 percent of all pollution on this planet is caused by like two companies um or 10 companies yeah like 70 percent of all pollution is caused by 10 companies and i do agree you know when it comes to a lot of issues around pollution um individual action won't change much because most of the pollution is coming from the corporations um and of course you know the system we live in it's hard for everyone to drive an electric car it's hard for everyone to afford you know things around renewable energy to really make a significant change which is why the easiest thing to do is change what you eat that is the easiest thing you can do to make a change like it's literally like you're not giving up anything i mean you're giving up meat and dairy but then meat and every food doesn't revolve around meat and dairy there's so much more food out there and that's something that i figured out um when i went vegan is how much food that there actually was out there so many there so much variety of food that i would have never sort of come across if it wasn't for veganism but being vegan is the easiest thing you can do like it doesn't you don't have to buy anything you don't have to you know sell anything you just change what you buy and more it's cheaper like uh, it's cheaper than buying whatever you were buying before no, that so i think that's it and i just want to see what he ends with how this argument ends it's a moral flaw that i have or maybe it's a logical flaw that i have but i value human beings on on simply on the on the on the uh, virtue that they're human beings um and yep. and therefore of course i would not advocate to, uh, to holocaust uh, uh, a population uh, even if they were um even if they were 51 percent uh yep. lacking the capacity to build a civilization does it make sense yep. I, I hear you saying that. So yeah, I got. I was just going to complete there. So I've heard that there was this combo initially of civilization and species normality. But you're saying you know you don't fully want to put that out because it's just something about humanity. Maybe you're wrong to value it. Whatever you're kind of hedging it. But I'd also just point out the humanity reductio, uh, which is if you say the thing you value is just humanity. If we had human level consciousness in something non-human, you'd have to be comfortable uh, murdering that as well. So no, yeah, you, if, uh, no, 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 I wouldn't. Can... I wouldn't. If if I that's the point I was trying to make is the reason why I don't have a, I'm not comfortable eating uh, 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 monkeys and whatnot is is precisely because of that. I think that there are certain animals that mm -hmm. that reach even higher than than others, and in which case we should not eat them. Um, but but other animals, uh, I, I, I feel comfortable eating. Wait, that doesn't totally make sense. You can't justify not eating those animals on grounds. I still wouldn't that they're care. Human, I, I guess I still wouldn't care. You're right. You're right. You're right. I wouldn't care if people ate monkeys, but I personally wouldn't do it. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, um, but we're not just talking about monkeys. We're talking about creatures that could be subjectively identical to humans, but not have human DNA. So to Holocaust yeah. them would be no different subjectively than what happened in the Jewish Holocaust, for example. And if your sole moral value were humanity, you would have do to. Do you really think that? that? Yeah, let me ask you, do you really think that? Honestly, I don't think that that is what you would actually be comfortable with, which is why I think that the moral system you're articulating is... here is not ultimately what you should be. Uh, yeah. Agreeing. OK, well, anyway, let's we'll we'll do it later. If yeah. you can come on my stream, we can continue this conversation at a, at a later date. Happy anytime, man. Thank you for being. Oh, yeah. That I don't, I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but based on what other people have said, it didn't go too well. I mean, it would it just seem like it was an argument based on, you know, logistics and like technicalities and based on what, like understanding what each person's saying. And that's the thing about um, debates like that. It's mainly trying to win over the other person, like a debate me bro kind of situation. But when it comes to... Um, debates or not even debates just conversations uh with someone like joy carpstrong which i like or Ertling ed which does, who does an incredible job of you know showing empathy um showing kindness when he's talking to people and more than a debate it comes across more as a conversation and watching a lot of his videos is what 
eventually turn me into a vegan. So I, I guess I'm at the end of the stream right now. Like, I don't like Hassan has everything he needs. So he has all the information. He has all the facts. People have been trying to speak to him. It's not like he doesn't know these things. He very well knows about these atrocities. But why he doesn't go vegan or why he doesn't talk about it more often, why he doesn't make a conscious effort to start the process of becoming vegan, I just don't understand. And honestly, if someone as big as him can make that change to go vegan, I think that would be an amazing thing. I think that would influence a lot of people. It would change a lot of people. If in his politics, he also started talking about animals, I think that would be amazing. And if he sort of shared that energy into the H3 podcast universe, which I love Ethan, I love the whole entire crew. Um, I know that Dan is a vegetarian, um, but just... I don't know why he doesn't become vegan. I, I just don't know. He knows the arguments for it. He makes the arguments for it. Um, but I, it just comes across that he doesn't... He, he's not making that logical connection in his head. Meat tastes good. Yeah. But yeah, I just... I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Why it's frustrating. Why someone like him makes such stupid arguments against veganism. Um, but I'd love to talk about, I'd love to talk to you, Hassan. I'd love to talk to him in a longer format video. Um, I wouldn't go debate me bro on him. I just want to understand where he's coming from. I want to talk to him about, you know, my, um, my approach, um, coming from a bodybuilding fitness perspective as well. I've been lifting for 10 years. I'm competing soon. Um, I'd love to, you know, talk to me about that. Talk to me about fitness, nutrition, around veganism, but yeah, I just, I want to understand him. I want to understand why he doesn't go vegan. I want to understand what his actual take without the sarcasm, without the jokes actually is on veganism. Um, but that's it, guys. I'm going to end this stream right now. If you have any questions, you can let me know. If you like this stream, this has been my second stream so far. I've taken a lot of the advice that I've gotten um, in terms of making my window bigger, making it smaller, um, I'm using a different software now. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. I'd love to do more of this. I like just sitting down, um, reacting to things, speaking my mind. But yeah, I'd love for you guys to let me know how this went. Subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps me. It knows that you guys are actually liking my content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.